So it's been a very long time since we've talked about the game itself, World of Tanks console update 7.0 that is, and of course we're going to get into that in today's video, we're going to have a bit of a discussion and of course I want to get your thoughts on World of Tanks console for PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and PS5, whatever version you're playing on, let me know how you're feeling about the game and I'm going to go through some of my frustrations with Wargaming themselves and of course the game itself and potentially the things that are going to be coming to the game fairly soon to kind of solve some of them I guess but there we go let's get straight into the video now so first things first I think it's time we talk about gameplay what is it like when you actually hop into the battle because obviously that's the most important thing on World of Tanks because you know if the gameplay's terrible you ain't going to be playing the game uh, you certainly won't be spending any of your time performing or trying to do anything in the game because it just is terrible now from my personal opinion what do I think about the gameplay after update 6.0 and the developments upon that uh, currently uh, as of the recording of this video well I think the gameplay has got a hell of a lot better from its first inception in update 6.0 but then again how would it not be better than then because it's been a year and we've really not had that many considerable updates yeah it took them months to be able to fix some consumable bug really was annoying how long it actually took since that update till when it's kind of a polished game now uh, I guess the gameplay feels a lot more like World of Tanks did before the update 6.0 um, but I guess for the most part I'm still not enjoying the gameplay as much as maybe I wanted to I think the whole spotting mechanics have got a hell of a lot less effective so no longer can you use camo as best as you could have previously because yeah everyone just kind of has broken view range now because they could just whack on advanced optics advanced concealment and then put all of the camo perks on making them pretty much just like a light tank if you're playing in a TD now and often actually if you're playing a light tank you get out spotted by TDs all of the time and whether or not that is actually just because I'm playing wrong I don't particularly think so uh, I just think that that is kind of how the game has progressed TDs tend to be stationary and so they just sit in a bush and when you're playing in a light tank and you're trying to progress against something that's sat in a bush obviously you're at the disadvantage especially considering they probably know where you're coming from and they're going to be squished up against a map border somewhere that you don't particularly know where they are at um, Forgetting all of the spotting mechanics because that's just a whole new video that we could do on <laughs> on that itself. I don't know how you're feeling about that but I certainly am a little bit miffed with the whole um, concealment and all of the changes that kind of came with that. I think that the buffs that they basically gave everyone to accuracy, yes although it is nice to hit your shots more consistently within the game, it certainly became... Oh, it just basically meant that everyone was able to hit on the move. Things like the perks that bring in the steady aim perk, which just increases your accuracy by a flat 10% in all areas. Um, yeah, that is just mental, considering before, you know, you had things like Snapshot, which was a, a crew skill that basically gave you, I think it was something on along the lines of 3% better accuracy when moving the turret. Which I think you can still get now, but I think it's actually like 12% or something ridiculous to accuracy when moving the turret. Which, let's face it, when you compare that to on a KV-2, which has fairly awful um, dispersion and accuracy, well now it's not particularly that inaccurate. And things like the Dreadnought benefited from this hugely. So of course the tier 7 KV-2 essentially that has better mobility, it has a better gun, it has 252mm of heat penetration on a tier 7 that does 700 alpha. Mm. It's also very mobile, it has pretty much everything that you'll ever need on a tier 7 heavy slash tank destroyer slash medium basically, it's just an all round broken tank but there we go, that's wargaming for you, especially the console version. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking that, you know, these changes, the changes to the accuracy, the changes to the gameplay itself weren't necessarily the worst thing. They definitely shifted away from World of Tanks itself as a game or a core franchise, you know, looking at World of Tanks Blitz and World of Tanks PC, of course being the most notable one. Um, yeah, they definitely shifted away from that and you're seeing with uh, Crew 2.0 on World of Tanks that actually 
they're kind of moving towards the system as well. There's a lot more actual buffs to the accuracy, the tanks themselves, uh, that are basically making every tank better, all, all in one go. And that's probably why, when you jump into the game itself, you're seeing that the battle timer is taking like three minutes now to be able to complete a game, whereas before, you know, maybe not straight away before update 6.0, but, you know, the period of time before that, you were looking at six minute battles, and now you're kind of looking at that three to four minute range. And of course, I think the average battle length has actually decreased significantly. Obviously, that's impacted by the inflow of new players in to the game because since update 6.0 a lot of the veteran players that were continuously supporting the game have now left i guess that's wargaming's kind of way of taking forward the whole pay to pay to basically get rid of you you know you come in you pay your money then you leave uh, that's kind of wargaming's monetization strategy i guess uh yeah it definitely feels like that on console you know you come in you pay for your season pass you pay for a premium tank you pay for a premium bundle you try and buy premium time something like that and then basically after that they don't really care once you've spent your money then they're absolutely fine with you leaving the game because to be honest if you buy one bundle from the wargaming store that's pretty much the price of a AAA plus game and of course since it's free a lot more people are trying the game trying to pay to try the game out and then essentially they're basically farming the money off of these new players of course to be honest with you me being a veteran player I should be the one spending lots of money on the game but I haven't spent money on World of Tanks in well since I bought premium time I believe it was um, and that was maybe a year ago and I've still got 240 days left which of course went towards um, that was because of the season passes that we've got currently which I think are a good thing but you know, I'm not so sure about the whole tier 10s for new players because yeah it's not a very nice experience for the new players or the experienced players who get all of the newbies on their team but then again you know I guess that that is a video game and you can't really you know complain too much as far as for the new players, since we've been talking about them, I think it's kind of interesting to see what your guys' opinions are. Are you a new player? Have you just started playing World of Tanks? Are you a veteran player? Just let me know what you actually think, because often I read the comments and there's lots of different opinions down there saying, you know, this should be happening, this should be happening, and I do actually think it is good to talk about these things. And for me personally, I think it is also interesting to see the viewpoints of lots of different people because, you know, I've been playing for six and a half years. And so, yeah, I've racked up 22,000 battles, I think it is now, which is a crazy number, I know. Um, yeah, it's just been constant, constant pressure uh, to be able to just, you know, perform well, to be able to make videos for you. And sometimes that kind of hinders my objectiveness, I guess. Uh, as to what I think should happen in the game and of course you know when I see your comments it does really help to kind of think about what you guys want to see if you want new player guides you want to be seeing um, ways in which you can learn how to play certain tank lines do you want me to showcase some of the tank lines within the game are you wanting me to do guides are you wanting me to do how to play light tanks how to play medium tanks how to play tank destroyers etc etc do you want top five guides what kind of things do you want me to do next and i think that, that is something i haven't asked in a while i've kind of been doing my own thing on the channel which of course you know of course you guys have been supporting that but I guess I wanted to kind of involve you a little bit more in the whole development of the content itself. So I've got a lot of ideas stockpiled up in my spreadsheet. Yes, I have got a spreadsheet. I am boring. Um, but there we go. We'll be looking at trying to produce some more uh, new player guidance, some actual content that is trying to help you. Uh, more so than just my update news. I mean, I'll still be doing the update news, don't get me wrong. Of course, I will, will go through everything. It will just be in the slots in between that I'm trying to help you out and just produce content that is going to be helpful in the long run to all of the new players and also yourself included if you're a more veteran or experienced player or you've been playing for, you know, over three months because essentially that is kind of my audience. I expect that they're more veteran players, to be honest with you. And the new player guides are kind of just there for anyone else that kind of tries to join World of Tanks. Although playing in 2021, I'm not entirely sure it's the nicest place. 
to be playing World of Tanks in. Now quite possibly the biggest section of today's video is going to be talking about Wargaming's development of the game. What do I think of Wargaming's approach to World of Tanks console, how their new kind of ways in which they're going to be taking forward the game using the Cold War mode and of course the World War II mode and we're going to be seeing about what kind of things I think anyway and then you know we'll give a few opinions as to what I've seen in the comments I've seen lots of you actually enjoying the Cold War mode but you're saying it's not necessarily your go-to mode for playing but it is there as like an essential add-on or extra that you can basically farm your silver now I agree to be honest with you, if I'm going to try and grind out tons and tons of silver, I may ju hop, jump on the Cold War game mode, play in a premium tank, whack on my two times silver bonuses that I've been getting from the season passes and all of the various events that go on within the game. And then, you know, I don't have to spend multiple games playing in a premium tank that I don't particularly like on the World War II mode. You know, it saves me time, saves me like effort. And it means I can get to you the content that you probably want to see because, of course, it does actually cost me silver every time I make a video. And if I kit out a tank or buy back some of the pre uh, standard tech tree tanks, it costs a hell of a lot to be able to keep on top of. And, you know, I only have a limited amount of time in every week to be able to hop on an actual play to be able to earn the silver. Yes, I could pay to win, but I'm not going to be paying like £50 to get myself a like 6 million silver or whatever the ridiculous pricing that William try and actually implement in the game definitely wouldn't recommend actually buying silver in the game because it is just overpriced as hell and you're better off just buying a premium tank in the cold war mode playing a couple of games and you'll probably earn a hell of a lot more silver than you will from what you actually pay to be able to actually get the silver just on its own um yeah back on track to wargaming what do i think of their development well i think that the cold war mode itself was it as revolutionary as I thought it might be for World of Tanks console? Did it bring in and retain the players that were new? No. No, it didn't. Absolutely not. It really did not bring in or have the effect on players that I thought it might have done. Now, was I saying that it was going to be fantastic and everyone was going to love it and everyone was going to play it and it would be the brand new kickstart for World of Tanks console for PS4 and Xbox One? Well, no, no, I didn't think it was going to be like that, but I did think that it would generate a hell of a lot more players to be able to jump on and play the game more consistently because, you know, when you think about it, what other tank game on console, at least other than War Thunder, can you actually play that revolves around this kind of gameplay style? And so, yeah, I thought that there was definitely an audience for the modern tanks within the game because uh, obviously Armored Warfare didn't fare too well, but then again, should wargaming be developing a mode into a game market that they already know didn't work out very well well you know i guess the numbers within the queues can tell you exactly what it's like and considering that 90 percent of my matches have some bots within them i think that that pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the cold war mode and of course the armadillos oh, they just ruin the game mode straight away uh, in terms of the era 2 with the premium tanks that they released you know releasing these armadillos i thought that the game was fun until they just kept releasing these overpowered premium tanks that just got better every single time that they got released yeah it just wasn't what i was after and i thought that it kind of took away from the game mode it was meant to be this quite kind of more historical well somewhat historical i guess in terms of you know let's release out some new tanks that are novel that are actual real tanks in real life and unfortunately i just feel like they just used it to basically promote their kind of selling of these G.I. Joe tanks and the variety of different um, sponsorships that they basically had. I didn't think that it was really a mode that I enjoyed straight away. I think that there are definitely benefits to it. I think that the um, having the true vision is good for some, some players. You know, for me personally, I'm not a fan of it. I don't like True Vision, but then again, you know, some people do, and I can't say that, you know, having a mode where one people uh, or 70% of the player base really like the the mechanics of it, and then, you know, the other 30% don't like it, maybe just have a mode for both players, because essentially that is what the Cold War mode is for. So I'm not against it at all. I think that it is a good feature within the game. Do I think it was executed to the best of Wargaming's ability? Absolutely not. But then again, what actually 
actually has been executed to the best of wargaming's ability in the last six or seven years since World of Tanks console has actually been released. Not very many things. Uh, maybe the store or bundles, maybe they were executed the best, but there we go. <laughs> we won't get into the microtransactions and the wargaming economy. Uh, within this video but of course let me know what you actually think about the two game modes do you think that they were successful do you think they're a positive addition or do you just think that it split the player base and it ended up in this stagnation point and people don't really know what to play and so they don't play world of tanks anymore or do you even play world of tanks anymore because for me i definitely don't play as much as i used to before update 6.0 I guess that that is the crux of this video, I wanted to kind of talk about my opinions on the game, keep you updated as to how I'm actually feeling, give you some rundown as to what I think Wargaming's strategies are. Yes, I am a Wargaming community contributor, but to be honest with you, it's really for you guys um, to just try and give you something back to my community, voice my opinions to Wargaming, although, you know, given the recent things that have been going on with Wargaming on PC and World of Warships and all of the variety of different community contributor programs, I don't think that people really actually have much of a say, but oh, there we go. I guess that, that is kind of what it's like to play devil's advocate. I hope you guys really do enjoy these type of videos and of course let me know what you want to see next on this channel because I will be creating videos as of and when I can and on content that you guys actually want to see I will look back through my various videos that have obviously got the most views and what I think people have been advantaged over watching and then we'll go from there. Of course let me know what you think in the comment section down below about everything that you've seen and thank you very much for watching to this point and thank you very much to all of the channel members that have joined the channel using the join feature down below yeah it really does really help me out and just gives me a little bit of cash to be able to spend on the game itself and just keeping that premium time and stuff like that over the course of the year definitely does help and releasing these tank reviews and stuff like that but thank you very much for watching thank you very much for sticking around and i really do appreciate your support goodbye